The Morning Majority on 630. 8.07 on a Monday morning. This is The Morning Majority. Brian Neiman, Jim Pethokoukis in the house this morning. A columnist, blogger for Reuters, also a CNBC contributor. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, for having me. Um, listen, I have a tough last name. Yes. Pethokoukis. It's hard. Very difficult to search right. on it. I have this blog. Right. If you want to find the blog, mm-hmm. here's what you do. You got to Google Jimmy P. Okay. You Google Jimmy P. The first thing they'll come up with is going to be a butcher. Yeah, I figured. That's it. a butcher, I think, in Venice, Florida. <laughs> I'm the second guy. Right. I'm the, I'll be the second Jimmy P that comes up. First guy, go ahead, get a nice sausage. Yeah. Not a problem. And if you still want a little commentary and money and politics, the economy and everything, mm-hmm. you go to the second entry. That's me. That's my blog at Roy. Okay. Jimmy P. That's what you want to do. Because <laughs> Beth the is hard as that. Uh, I forget. I've done it pretty I think I've handled it pretty well this morning. Oh, yeah, like, I think at least a 55% success rate. That, that is <laughs> that's solid. That's not bad. That's all right. Really. Michael Barone, that's easy to say, joins us now. Senior political analyst for the Washington Examiner. Good morning, Michael. Oh, Michael, are you there? Oh, we lost Michael. No, no, no. no? Oh. Right, who's calling uh, Jim Pathakukas? I'm so we missed that. Can you say that again? Because we had technical difficulties. Not well, with the I'm name. I'm happy to be on with my former U.S. News colleague uh, Jim Pathakukas, and she also used to work with Jimmy P. The butcher down in <laughs> Jimmy P. is going to get a lot of pump love this morning. That's for sure. All right, so Michael, you look at this way for me. I watched the Sunday chat shows, and I saw Tom Coburn, the Republican from Oklahoma, yesterday. Yesterday, making the case, he's part of that gang of six, where he says, "You look, Paul Ryan's budget's going nowhere. The president doesn't even have a budget. The only way something's going to get done is if we do it on a bipartisan basis, and it's going to come out of the Senate. Do you agree with what uh, Senator Coburn is saying? Well, I think, uh, you know, that's pretty much a correct analysis. Mm-hmm. I mean, Paul Ryan's budget has passed the, the, the House. It is... Uh, you know, binding on the House under reconciliation rules and so forth, as as Ryan himself points out, because of the way that the procedure works in the House, uh, the reconciliation rules are kind of irrelevant because the majority really does control what goes on on the floor, and uh, majorities are needed and so forth. So, you know, that's the House's position. Uh, the president, as we say, has uh, gone into campaign mode and really with a feckless lack of leadership has uh, given us a fantasy. Uh, budget as far as long-term entitlements and everything else goes. Um, I'm still looking for those people that said that he was a combination of um, Edmund Burke and, uh, 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 you know, uh, Reinhold Niebuhr. I think it's... uh, (laughs) Um, I think it's more Edmund Burke and or uh, Jimmy Burke and Jimmy P. I think. <laughs> I'm not so sure that means. Guy. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's kind of pathetic. Uh, the performance of the president, who was uh, sold to us as kind of a philosopher king. Uh, so that means that then that means there there are two serious budgets on the table. One soon to be right. that is Paul well, Ryan's, and then the Gang of Six. Well, soon to be on the table is another way of putting that in English is not on the table. Right. Okay. Uh, you Fair know, uh, we have an agreement in principle means we don't have an right. agreement. Uh, and you know, Tom Coburn, Mike Crapo, and and Saxby Chambliss, the Republicans that are the three of the Gang of Six, you know, are talking about accepting uh, tax increases as part of the package. That certainly has been a no-go for Republicans, and it's hard to see Republicans yeah. on the House. If they, right, if that's the it. package. I mean, if that's the package, some sort of you know tax increases, how many House Republicans are going to vote for that, and do I need more than one hand to count? I think they need more than one hand, and I think they need, uh, they need a White House on this. Um, you know, if you go back to look at, at grand bipartisan bargains like the Tax Reform Act of 1986, one of the things you'll see is that there was... Uh, first of all, an initial interest expressed by the president in favor of that. President Reagan called for this kind of a tax reform in his 1985 State of the Union or right coming into the slot after having been reelected in 1984. Uh, and, uh, cooperative attitude on the part of the Treasury, um, and so forth. Uh, we haven't seen anything uh, of that nature. Do, do you think Obama even wants a deal? I mean, if you look at that budget speech from a couple of weeks ago, it sounded like he just wanted to run a, a campaign, a class warfare campaign, attacking the rich. I mean, does he want a deal? Well, I think not. I think that, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, the community organizer-in-chief, um, and uh, what you do as a community organizer is identify enemies. In this case, it's the evil rich. You... Uh, 
you know, they're greedy. They want to hold on to their money. It's terrible. We've got we, we'll build high speed rail with it. Uh, How effective are those sorts of populist campaigns? Well, the answer is, I think, not very. I mean, we've had a uh, history of this uh, going on for a long period of time, and populism and envy doesn't work. I mean, the Republicans lost in 2006 and 2008 not because of this appeal, not so much on ideology as on competence. People felt they were not performing uh, competently in Iraq uh, on Katrina and not performing competently in uh, such high important things as running the Congressional Page Program and a lot of other scandals in the Congress. Um, that cost them majorities in the Congress and presidency in 2008. I don't think this was a vote for class envy and class warfare. I think that uh, the Obama's appealing to the wrong century and the wrong country. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, look at his numbers. They're not good. So then what happens with the budget? Are we not going to get a, a budget the way we would typically get a budget and on, on a full vote and we have it go, you know, move on? Because it doesn't seem like there's going to be enough votes in the, in the House and Senate and the president has, you know, threatened vetoes. Well, the House has passed a budget. Yeah, the and House Senate, has, but it's never uh, passed the Senate. The Senate, uh, unless something comes with a gang of six, and I'm I'm still kind of skeptical till I see it happen. I'm you know I like and respect the six senators, but uh, I think that they're setting themselves a tough task. Uh, I don't think we're going to get a Senate budget resolution, which means we won't have uh, the sort of reconciliation and things that uh, enables us to pass some of these controversial measures in the Senate, which is 50 votes. The um, and uh, I, will we get appropriations for the government? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the uh, Congress, the House is going to pass appropriations. I think the Senate will probably at least pass a defense appropriation, Homeland Security, uh, may do more. Uh, we will see some negotiations there. Um, and, we, you know, the, the question is, will we just see more feckless demagoguery from the president, or will we actually see him engaged in serious public policy making, which is something he has not done in his career uh, very much. He's been mostly a candidate for higher office and voting present on current issues. Um, right now he's voting present, and it's not even clear that that's an accurate All vote. Right, before we let you go, I want to get your take. What do you think of Donald Trump? Is he serious, and is he a formidable candidate? Yeah, I think uh, this is really going to do a lot for his ratings on The Apprentice and his future in TV. Okay. Uh, you know, he's he's a serious entertainer. He's an interesting chap. Uh, you know, I think he may have potential as a third candidate. I think that this is a time when the public was ups upset with both major parties third candidates, uh, you know, we had Ross Perot got 19% of the votes of our fellow citizens, even though it was obvious he was clinically insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that there is a potential for Donald Trump to do well. There is the Republican nominee. No, I don't think that, you know, he's not actually a Republican. Um, he's not a Democrat either, but... Uh, yeah, but do you think he'll run? Yeah. Do you, do you think it, he would actually, you know, reach into his own back pocket and, and put up uh, money for his campaign? Or, or anybody else get in this race? Is, will well, Trump get anybody yeah, else? He's got as much in his own back pocket as he'd like people to think. Uh, you know, those Atlantic City casinos are uh, getting pretty. Th the carpet's getting pretty threadbare, uh, and his business interests have gone up and down. Some of his enterprises have gone into bankruptcy. So. Uh, uh, you know, he, he's painted himself as one of the great business successes of all time. I'm not sure that he's got the money to sell. Are you saying that he may not have $600 million in cash ready to spend? <laughs> I'm saying that. I mean, Michael Bloomberg uh, does, as I understand it. Yeah. Um, Mr. Trump uh, has got a casinos in Atlantic City where fewer people go than in the past. They're still using those little Bloomberg machines uh, in every financial services business in the world. Well, Bloomberg so, said yesterday he's definitely not going to run. Do you think Bloomberg's out as well? You, I think Bloomberg work? is a poor fit for a th yeah. uh, poor fit for either party, and he's a poor fit for a third party candidacy because he's kind of the establishment guy. He wants more gun control. Well. Yeah you know, rule out half the states on that. Uh, he wants, uh, you know, he, 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 he's, he's favored higher taxes in New York. Well, that's not necessarily going to be a big sell. He's got those liberal cultural attitudes. 
uh, Trump, like Perot, is running more of an of, of an outsider, of a guy who's not in with the establishment, mm-hmm. and I think that has some greater potential as a third party candidacy. Uh, Bloomberg's positions are a lot like those of the Democratic Party, and since we'll have a Democratic nominee, you don't really need him. All right, Michael. Great to talk to you as always. We appreciate your time. Okay, good luck to uh, uh, Jimmy P. on the uh, butcher business. <laughs> <Yeah. All right. laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Michael Barone, senior political analyst for the Washington.